Hi, I'm Blake from BA Electronics, and it's finally happening. I built my own Mac. Now, why did I build my own Mac? Well, it's simple. I didn't want to pay for one, so I built one for a lot less money. The total cost of this system was about $900, including parts, shipping, everything. Shipping didn't really cost anything because I ordered from Amazon Prime. Now, why would you want to build a Mac? Well, one, it's cheaper. Two, you can upgrade it later. And three, it's a lot of fun to build your own computer. It doesn't really matter if it's a Mac or a PC. You'll learn a lot of things building your own computer. So I'm going to go through the steps on how I built this one. Is it illegal? Yeah. Is it difficult? Mm, somewhat. Is it fun? Let's find out. So for this build, I bought all the parts from Amazon.com. There are links in the description where you can buy these parts directly, if you want to build the exact same computer I did here. So the first box I opened was the Corsair 100R. This case is configurable with or without the side panel window, and of course I had to get the one with the window. Now this case does come with one fan, so you don't really need to buy any extras. Next was the power supply, a Corsair CS550M. So in the box you get those warranty papers, an AC power cable, and all the necessary cables for the power supply. And this is the power supply itself. Next is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is the box of accessories. And this is the cooler itself. This cooler is very big and might not fit in some smaller cases. Next is the Samsung 850 Evo SSD. I got the 500 gigabyte version of this SSD. Next is this 16 gigabyte kit of crucial DDR4 memory. When buying your memory, make sure to know what speed of memory your motherboard supports. Next is this little Bluetooth adapter. When I bought mine from Amazon, the package was open for some reason. Next is the star of the show, an Intel Core i7-6700. This is not the K version. The K version has a higher clock speed. All of Intel's newer processors are called conflict-free. Go to this website if you want to know more about what that really means. Inside the box is the papers, a little sticker, and the processor itself. The 6700 comes with a heatsink. I've heard it's not the best, but at least it comes with one. The K version does not. Now you might ask, where's the motherboard? Well, that one wasn't Amazon Prime, so I had to wait a few extra days for it. I also got some Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Compound. Since I've heard the included thermal compound with the cooler is not that great. And now here's the motherboard. Now this motherboard is the Gigabyte GA-Z170 HD3, which is a full-size ATX motherboard. You also get the papers and an included IO shield for your case. The board comes in an anti-static bag, which will be helpful for the build in a little while. So now that we've got the parts, let's get started. Now first things first, put your motherboard box on your desk first, then put the anti-static bag, and then the motherboard. This will protect against static shock. Next you'll need the CPU. When placing the CPU in the socket, match the white triangle on the CPU with the white triangle next to the socket. Also make sure to line up the two tabs at the opposite side of the CPU. Then close the socket and put down the retention arm. Next is the RAM. Locate the notch on the socket and the notch on the stick, line them up, and then just press the RAM stick into the socket. Next is the CPU cooler. If you're using the stock cooler, all you really have to do is push the pins into the holes in the socket. On the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, it's quite a bit different. This actually took me a while to figure out, but you have to put the back plate on the motherboard first, put the screw through the board, and then secure that with a nut on all four sides. Next is actually putting the cooler on. This was even more difficult for me. First, just rip off that little piece of plastic that covers up the part that touches the CPU. 
put some thermal compound on the CPU. Just a little bit will do, you don't need a lot. Extend out the little metal bracket that holds on the cooler, and on the cooler there's a small pin that locates into a hole onto the bracket. Make sure to line those up first, and then just press the cooler into place and tighten it down with the screws. I recommend not tightening down the screws on one side first. Rather, screw them in in a crosswide pattern. Screwing them in a crosswide pattern. Then reinstall the fan onto the cooler. I didn't mention this before, but it was actually easier to take off the fan first before installing the cooler. Next is just putting this whole assembly into the case. First, put your IO shield into place in the slot in the back of the case. Then slide the motherboard in onto the IO plate and onto the standoffs in the case. Now I had a slight problem with the clearance in my case. The included fan didn't actually fit where I wanted it to be because of that extremely large cooler. What I ended up doing is putting the case fan on the top of the case instead of pointing out the back. Then just screw your motherboard into each of the standoffs. On this board, there were two on the bottom, two on the top, and one in the center. Next is putting in the power supply. This is super easy. All you have to do is just push the power supply into its spot and screw it in with the screws on the back. Next is the SSD. This case has quote unquote toolless bays, but really you just need a screwdriver. Just put four screws into the bottom of the SSD and just clip it right onto the bay, then slide it into the case. Next was wiring and cable management. I didn't try to film this because it was a very tedious process. It was kind of hard getting the cables where they needed to be. Most of the cables can only fit in one way, so you can't really mix any of these cables up, like power for data or anything like that. Your case may be different, but my case had front panel power, reset, and hard drive activity lights, which plugged into the bottom. And also, front panel headphones and microphone and USB, which plugged into a different spot. All these are labeled on your motherboard, so there shouldn't be much confusion about these. Next were just those little finishing touches. You know, when you get a pre-built PC, you usually get those little Intel stickers on the bottom? Well, the CPU and motherboard do come with those, so I just put them on there. And of course, this is a Hackintosh, so you couldn't forget the Apple logo. Now was right, the moment of truth it, to so see if it works. I'm gonna turn on this switch here, which shouldn't do anything. I'm gonna push the power button on the front panel and see if anything works. I saw something there for a second. Oh, there we go. And surprisingly, it did work. First try. Now, of course, there's no operating system yet, so you should configure your BIOS setup for the recommended settings. There's a great guide on TonyMacX86.com on all your BIOS settings and how to install OS X onto one of these machines. First, you have to get a USB flash drive, which I believe has to be 16 gigabytes or larger. Formatted in disk utility using these settings that you see on screen. First thing you'll have to do is download Mac OS Sierra from the App Store, and then run the Unibeast application, which can be downloaded from TonyMacX86.com. Once you get to this menu, click your drive, the OS you want to install, the type of boot mode, and if you're installing extra graphics cards. Enter in your administrator password, and let the software do the rest. Next, download MultiBeast and copy that over to your USB as well, just manually by drag and drop. Now boot from your USB with the boot option menu that comes up right when you turn on the computer. From there, it should just be a regular install of Mac OS Sierra, go through the menus, install. From there, run the multi-beast application that you drag and drop to your USB drive, and it's pretty self-explanatory from there. Just select what hardware you have, and MultiBeast will automatically install the necessary drivers. So that's pretty much it. Now just sit back and relax and enjoy this B-roll footage of the computer. She's singing, ooh, you've got one life to live, don't let it go. Ooh.